So in today's felt tutorial, what we're going to be doing is actually implementing some of our knowledge we've learned in previous episodes and build a progress bar. And then at the end of the episode, we're going to be incorporating some smooth animation and transitions using um, the easing and motion libraries that are built right in this felt. So without further ado, let's just get started. Um, all I have right now in this project is um, a progress component and some very, very basic text to make it look nice as well as three buttons inside the progress component. So if you want to follow along, that's all you really need. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is make our progress bar. So to do that, typically you have two divs. Um, so we'll go ahead and create those. So we'll have a div, uh, which will give a class of outer. And then we'll have a div with a class of inner. And these do exactly as they sound. The outer div will be like the shell for the actual progress bar. And the inner div will be filled up um, per the amount of progress. So let's create a style tag. And let's do dot inner and dot outer because we want to grab both of them. And we're just going to give them a height of, let's just say, 40 pixels. And a border radius of, let's say, 10 pixels, right? And then for the dot outer, we're going to give it a width of 80, 80 VWs for viewport widths. We're going to give it a margin of 10 pixels on the top and auto. So it's just going to center it. And then we're going to give it a background color of, let's say, transparency and a border of one pixel solid. And let's just pick a nice color like 222, a nice, basically dark color. So if we look, we'll see we have our progress bar right here. I'm actually going to move the margin up by, say, 30. So there it is. So this is our outer progress bar. So when this is um, like this, all we have is a empty bar, basically at 0%. To actually create the inner progress bar, we're just gonna do dot inner and give it a width of, by fault, let's just say 40, right? And a background color of, let's say tomato, because I really like this color. So there we go. You can see our progress bar right here. We have a background and a uh, the width is what's determining the actual width of the inner bar. So if we set this to 1% or 10%, it would just be right here. So I'm also going to set the back, the border color to tomato as well. There we go. So this is our progress bar. How do we actually now get this to animate? So over here, I've created three buttons. And basically, when you click one button, um, I want it to go to that percentage. So if I click 0, I want this to go to 0%. So how do we go about doing that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable up here and I'm going to call it progress, right? And I'm going to give it a value of, let's say, uh, zero by default. And to actually uh, set the progress of the inner bar, we can just come in here and do something like style and then do width. And since we have to give a percentage or pixel value, but we want to do percentage, we can just open up brackets and type in progress, right? And then just do progress percent. So at 0% right now, if we set progress to say 40, we now have a progress bar of 40% size. Now let's actually get these buttons to do just that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create on click um, events. And all we're going to do is set the progress to zero in this case, 50% in this case, and 100 in this case, right? And what you'll see is we can toggle between them, and it works. Now, one thing you may notice is it doesn't look very smooth. See how it just instantly jumps there, right? And... It just, I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't look that nice. Well, for example, look at my buttons, right? When I hover over them, they have a nice, smooth easing um, in and out. And that's just done through base CSS transitions. But I wanted to show that it, it looks kind of janky side by side. So let's actually um, smooth this out. So if this were like an animated progress bar showing actual progress, it would look a lot nicer. So 
the first thing we're going to do is import the tweened library from Svelte. So we're going to come up here and we're going to do imports and then from Svelte slash and it's motion. So we're going to import tweened from Svelte slash motion. And while we're at it, we're also going to import something called cubic outs from and we're going to import it from svelte slash easing and these are uh, default with svelte you'll have these unlocked so instead of setting progress to a default value what we're actually going to do is i'm just going to make it a constant and we're going to set it equal to a store basically but instead of just doing something like writable or readable we're going to actually set it to this tweened um, function now, what this takes in is an initial value, just like a store, and then it takes in some parameters, right? So the first parameter it takes is uh, duration. So we can pass in a custom duration. So if I do 2000, that would be two seconds. So what that means is it's going to animate from the current value, which by default is going to be zero, to whatever the duration is. Uh, whatever the value we set it as and you can do that by just doing progress.set so we had to change this down here and actually um, implement this correctly so instead of setting the progress to a default value we'll just do progress.set uh, without a capital p there we go progress.set and we'll set it to zero right so just like that uh, yes s yes, there we go so progress.set to zero. Here we're going to do progress that's set uh, to 0.5 because a tweening function takes a value between zero and one and will convert it, um, you know, to the proper uh, to the proper uh, value. So no, there we go. Progress dot set and 100 or one. There we go. So now uh, what we should see is errors oh, that's why there we go so now we shouldn't really have an issue with this except this isn't this isn't going to work as we'd expect right so we can we can set it but it's not it's not doing anything and that's because this is a reactive value just like using stores before to actually get the value of progress um since it's a you know value we have to subscribe to this value using the dollar sign so now, if I set 0, nothing. If we do 5, um, 50, sorry, percent, it is... Oh, so yeah, since we're uh, clamping the values between 0 and 1, we also have to increment the value. Um, so right now, by setting it to 0 0.5, we're doing 0.5% width, right? If we set this to... You know, click here, we're going up to 1%. What we actually want to do is multiply this by 100. So what that'll do is take the value between 0 and 1 and convert it to a percentage. So if we click 50, what you'll see is this goes up to 50, or 100, or 0. Doesn't matter where you're at, it'll automatically go up to that value. So that's cool and all, but how do we actually maybe make this kind of you know, start off really fast. And then as it gets to 100, we have it slow down. And that's where we can use this cubic out function. So for example, we can do easing and set it equal to cubic out. And what this will do now, uh, barring any errors, do I have any errors? Don't. Is we can do this and what you'll see is it slows down as it gets to the value. So watch over here how when we click 100, it starts off really quick, and then it gets really slow as we get closer and closer. So here it is, slowing down. There we go. So yeah, this is animations with Svelte. For example, if we wanted to set the progress to, say, 1,000, so it takes one second, um, you see it goes a lot quicker. And we could also set it uh, a different way. So say we want... Um, going to 50% and 0% to take one whole second, right? So when we click these, it takes one second. But when we go to 100%, we want it to take 10 seconds. 
how would we do that? Well, we can override the previous values. So if we wanted to have like a custom duration and set it equal to 10, right? We can do that in here. So we can just pass in duration. And since we're destructuring, we don't have to do duration is equal to duration. It's the same thing. So you see this works and this is now taking 10 seconds. But if we also get rid of this, it'll also take 10 seconds. So there it is. And you can see it's slowing down the closer and closer it gets due to our cubic out uh, easing function. So that is pretty much all you need to know about um, the tweened function. You can think of it like a clamping function. So given a value um, between zero and one and a previous value, it'll convert that to a next value over a set period of time. So basically, it, it, it creates a smoother look. And you can write your own um, tweening function if you pass in a third parameter, which is uh, a custom function. So you can write your own tweening function. I just wanted to show you using the default Svelte one. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.